A couple of people recently on this channel asked me what's the difference between a master's thesis and a PhD thesis. So I thought I'd record this video to show you exactly what the differences are and what the similarities are between a PhD and a master's thesis or dissertation. And I think you'll be quite surprised by some of the real differences and some of the actual similarities which you might not have heard about before. So let's dive right in and see how these two differ. Before we get started, if you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkowiak and I run Academic English Now, where I help PhD students and researchers regularly write research papers for top journals in the field. And if you're interested in learning a little bit more about what we do and how we might be able to help you, then book a free one-to-one -one consultation with us and the link is right below this video. So now, what's the difference between a master's thesis and a PhD thesis? Um, let's first look at some of the main differences and then we'll dive into perhaps the most striking similarities because a PhD and a master's aren't completely different. They're also similar in some important ways. So first of all, the, the big difference is of course the length of the PhD and the master's thesis. When I wrote my PhD, it was hundreds and hundreds of pages. It's like this never-ending document and you keep on adding to it and you keep on writing and it kind of never ends. It's like hundreds and hundreds of pages, appendices and, and things like that. It's, it's a really thick volume, you know. Um, just the, the literature review on its own might be longer than, you know, the whole master's thesis, to be honest, right? So when it comes to the master's thesis, on the other hand, you know, you're looking at a much shorter document, depending on the university that you're in, the field that you're in, you know, you're sort of looking at, let's say, 10,000, maybe 15, one five, 15,000 um, words. On the other hand, when it comes to a PhD thesis, you're looking more at like, you know, 40, 50, 60,000 words, or even more, depending on your field, you know, if you're more in social sciences, it might be even longer, like 80,000 words, right? So the PhD thesis is a much longer document. That's the first really big difference. Now, another really important difference between a master's and a PhD thesis is also the depth that you go into, which is of course connected to the length. You know, when you're doing a master thesis, it's much more superficial. You don't have space, nor time, nor are you required to go into so much depth when it comes to, for example, reviewing the literature. On the other hand, when you're doing a PhD, you really, you know, you really have to go into a lot of depth you know, in terms of the knowledge that you produce, which I'll get into in a little bit, but also in terms of the knowledge that you, that you review, in, in terms of the state of the art. So the literature review in a PhD thesis will be much more extensive and you will be really um, required to critically evaluate, you know, the whole state of the art. In, on the other hand, in a master's thesis, you're not required to do that. It's more of a, you know, of a bird's eye view, a much more superficial um, overview of what's going on in your field. So that's another big difference, depth of knowledge, right? Now, this is also connected to another big difference, which is producing novel contributions. So in order to be awarded a PhD, you must produce novel contributions. You must create new knowledge, knowledge that has not been known up to now. With a master's thesis, you're not really required to do that. I mean, if you can do that, that's amazing, but nobody really requires you to do that. A master's thesis is more about, you know, for example, reusing some of the techniques that have been previously used or doing similar experiments to what other people have done, but maybe with, you know, a slightly different take or a slightly different material or a slightly different population. But you're not necessarily required to create new publishable knowledge with a master's thesis. Now, on the other hand, if you do not create novel um, contributions with your PhD, you won't be given 
a PhD, right? So a PhD has to contribute both to theory and also to, to ideally to practice as well. And it has to produce, you know, it has to contribute in a theoretical way through the literature review and through your results, but you also have to produce novel results, right? So that's why it's so important with a PhD thesis that you have a very clear and a very solid research gap. And I've got another video on this channel uh, where I dive deeper into what the research gap is and show you examples of, you know, how to create a solid research gap. But this is key, creating new knowledge that has not been there before in your field. That's another big difference in some, between a PhD and a master's thesis. Now, perhaps a, a less obvious difference as well between a master's and a PhD is who assesses um, both of the works. So in terms of the master's, it's normally assessed internally by, you know, by the, by the professors, um, supervisors within your university. And typically, you know, each university kind of has different criteria and they have like different assessment scales. And then, you know, typically two people within the university, including your supervisors, they just read your thesis and then they assess your work following some sort of standardized procedure that's usually different in each university, maybe even in each department, right? On the other hand, when it comes to a PhD thesis, what happens is that your thesis is also sent to external examiners, right? In, in some universities um, and in some countries, there's one um, internal examiner, meaning you know, either your um, direct supervisor or the head of your lab who will also um, review your thesis. But really, you know, most of the work is done by the external examiners. The number of external examiners differs from university and country to country. For example, um, when I did my PhD at the University of York in the UK, I had two external examiners. Now, where I live now in Belgium, um, in the University of Leuven, um, people have like five external examiners, right? All of whom read and criticize the thesis, right? And the, the way it's assessed is not really through some sort of university established criteria with like a marking scheme or anything like that, right? The reviewers themselves um, evaluate whether you have reached the PhD level. And, you know, a lot of it is about contributing new knowledge and that will criticize the methodology that you've used, the approach, the results that you've produced, how you interpret those results and things like that. So with a PhD, it's much more about the external rather than the internal examiners. Now, another big, big difference is that, you know, that is the overall assessment, which I've hinted on um, just now. But what I want to point out here is that, you know, in a PhD, the only thing that is assessed is your thesis, right? And your thesis, you know, either satisfies the examiners and the reviewers and you get a PhD or you don't, right? In terms of a master's, it's just a sort of culmination of the whole master's course, right? So of course the thesis is, is very important. You can pass or fail your thesis, but you, you know, you sort of get an overall grade for your master's as well, which includes the previous courses that you've taken, the grades on those courses and stuff like this. So you can do slightly worse on your thesis, but make up for it with really good grades elsewhere, right? So, you know, so, so that's, that's the whole difference um, as well. Now, another thing is, of course, the time that it takes to produce each work. Typically, you know, you write a master's thesis in a semester, sometimes in one year, um, in, the, in the last year of your master's program. Now, on the other hand, a PhD thesis is written over, you know, at least three years, sometimes four years, depending on the length of the program. So the time that it takes is much longer. And this is, you know, obvious because of the, 
you know high quality of novel contributions you need to produce but also because of the length i mean it's like four or five times as long as a master's thesis so no matter how amazing you'd be it's kind of impossible to write it in like six months right um because nobody types that fast to you know to be able to write eighty thousand words in six months right um so the length is another difference now um one big thing that differentiates um a PhD thesis from a master's thesis is also that in a PhD since you produce novel findings you very likely will be required to publish papers right there are some universities like like mine the University of York where I did my PhD that did not require me to publish papers but overall most PhD students need to publish at least one paper right and um, so that's a requirement that you need to fulfill in order to you know be awarded the phd apart from your thesis whereas with a master's you're not required to do that and most master's students don't publish any papers because they don't have the novelty of contribution with the thesis and this brings me to the structure of the thesis so the structure can be both similar and different between a master's and a phd what do i mean by that well in terms of a PhD, there are basically two structures of a PhD thesis, and I go into much more detail um, of them in another video that I have on this channel. But the first type of the structure is a paper-based thesis. So this means that during your PhD, you're required to produce, let's say, three or maybe four or five papers, and then you stitch those papers together and that becomes your PhD thesis. So for example, people will have a systematic review paper, which becomes a literature review, and then they'll have, for example, three experimental papers, and then they write a short introduction and a short conclusion to the thesis, put it all together, and then they have the thesis finished, right? So that's, if you're doing it as a paper-based PhD, then it's completely different to the way a master's thesis is structured. But of course, you can write a whole thesis or a dissertation as a PhD as well. And if you're doing that, it's structured exactly the same to a master's thesis. It's just that it's much longer. So how do we structure a PhD dissertation? Well, uh, first of all, you have an introduction chapter, right? In which you introduce the topic, why it's important, briefly review the literature, uh, point out the research gaps, state your aim, and provide the structure of your PhD thesis. And then you have the literature review in which you overview the main themes of the literature um, that lead to your research question. And I've got another video where I go into the structure, the exact structure of the literature review. Um, and then you have the methodology, right? And in the methodology, you know, you need to talk about the sample that you studied, you need to talk about um, the research tools, the procedures, right? How you analyzed your data, any relevant ethical considerations. These are the most typical elements of the methodology chapter. Um, in some fields like anthropology, you might also include what is called the, the research context. In other words, where your research took place, right? But that's the methodology chapter and it's exactly the same in a master's and in a PhD thesis. Now then you've got the results chapter and this can be either together with the discussion or separately but you know in in these two chapters or in this one results and discussion chapter you present the main results and then you discuss them so you compare them with lit with the literature you explain any interesting findings or any differences with the literature and you interpret your findings as well and you tell us what these findings mean right that's the results and discussion again exactly the same between a master's and a phd and finally you have the conclusion chapter in which you conclude so you you know restate the main results and the main takeaways from those results um, you point out any practical or theoretical implications um, of your findings and then you also highlight any limitations and make suggestions for future research and again this would be exactly the same in a master's or in a PhD thesis. So these are the main differences and similarities between a master's and a PhD thesis and if you want help writing an, an excellent thesis and publishing research papers for top journals in your field on a regular basis then definitely get in touch book a free one-to-one -one consultation uh, with my team and we'll see how we can help you achieve your goals faster and the link is right below this video